these are all the books that I read at least some part of. So the deal with May is that I am completely addicted to the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. However, this week they are off because the judge has to go to some conference or something, which is bizarre. So the trial is just like on pause for a week, which means I also have, you know, time to do things other than watch the trial. Um, so I'm basically doing a little mini readathon just to try to get through basically my entire TBR in one week. I wanted to start this vlog. Hey, ow! Cass is not on board with this plan. What's the matter, baby Ginny? Why are you so hostile? Yeah? No! Okay, as I was saying, I basically want to get, obviously not my entire TBR read this week, but as much as I possibly can. Cats! Why are you like this? As I was saying, I don't want to obviously read my entire TBR this week. Well, I would like to, but I cannot. That's not realistic. Cat! So destructive. I guess this is what I get for wishing I had my own stitch. You're basically stitch. You wreck everything you touch. Stop it, this is my TBR. Not toys for kitties. Stop that. Stop it. Anyway, as I've been trying to say over and over, but Kaz won't let me. I'm trying to read as many books as I possibly can this week because the trial is off this week. Since so, and since I decided that since I'm basically having a mini readathon, I would vlog it. Um, so from my TBR, I have five books that I'm hoping to get through this week. My my goal books. I currently. Hey! They have fed the beast, so I think she'll leave me alone for a second. <laughs> um, so, as I was saying, mini readathon this week. From my TBR, I have five books that I want to try to get through this week. Um, one is an audiobook that I can't physically have a copy of right this second, although there's a physical copy of it waiting in my mailbox. <laughs> um, that is This Woven Kingdom by Tahita Mafi. Um, my audio hold came in for it, so I just started it. Um, and I think it's not terribly long, so I can definitely finish that. I might even finish that today. And then, as soon as I finish this Woven Kingdom, I plan to start the audiobook for my patron uh, buddy read for May, which is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Um, I'm very excited to read this. I've heard amazing things about it. And we'll see how the audio goes. Uh, one of my patrons started on audio and then didn't like the audio. Um, it is long though, so it would be good to good for me if I could do it on audio, but we'll see. So I'll give it a go at least, since I have the audio from the library. So, this Woven Kingdom. Grace of Kings. And then I didn't finish last month, Jade War by Fonda Lee. Oh, there's the, there's the name. Um, so I would like to finish Jade War this month. So I have quite of a ways to go. <laughs> I'm on, I don't think this is current because I've been reading it on my Kindle. Yeah, I'm past that. I'm at chapter 22. So let's, let's see how far I actually am. Don't accidentally spoil yourself. That's where I'm really at, which isn't a lot farther than I was before. But anyway. So I have this much more to read in Jade War, so I would like to do that. I am buddy reading the next two, um, but trial being the trial, I'm sorry about the timing. I'm just reading it when I can. So The Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald, which I'm buddy reading with Alan. Um, we need to check, I need to check in with him. He probably would be like, no, I'm not starting it until basically June. And I'll be like, well, sorry, I'm reading it now. Or maybe he's finished it. I have no idea. And then the book that I'm buddy reading with Al and Jesse, The Twelve Kings um, in Sherakai. And I don't feel bad for the timing of this at all, because as far as I know, Jesse's already started it earlier this month, and Elle's not going to read it till the end of the month, so I'll just read it in the middle, and we've got it all covered. Someone will be reading this book at every point in this month. So yeah, those five books are my goal books. And then if I do miraculously finish those before Friday, um, then I also have Kaikei, Soul of the Fire, and Best of Cold. I didn't want to put Soul of the Fire and Best of Cold on my TBR um, this week, because Soul of the Fire and Best of Cold are rereads, so like push comes to shove. Like I can get the plus, I mean, also I have Best of Cold on audio. Anyway. Yes, I wanted to make sure to put on my TV on books that I'm physically reading and that are not rereads to make sure that I get to those. So yeah, that's the plan this week. Um, I have a little time before work this morning to read and then I do want to film some videos today because I haven't filmed any videos and I need to film some videos. Um, I'm thinking of filming a bookshelf tour, which I've never done before. I'm also thinking of doing it in parts, like part one, part two, part three, because I have a lot of bookshelves. And yeah, so basically this is just going to be, um, I was going to say a chill vlog, but there's nothing chill about a readathon, but a chill vlog in which I try to read as many things as I possibly can Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. That Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I need coffee. Um, yeah. Did I mention why I didn't start it yesterday? I wanted to start this vlog yesterday, but I was tired from the weekend and then I had a really busy work day. Cats, don't wreck my couch. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey. 
Stop it. What are you doing? Uh-uh. That's not toys for kitties. Stop it. Yes, I'm already behind by one day. Five books in five days was already a stretch goal. And now it's five books in four days, so wish me luck. So I finished my first book, um, This Woven Kingdom, like I said, I probably could. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the audiobook for This Woven Kingdom was read by Kate Redding, which is fine. Not my favorite, but it's fine. And then I just started the audiobook for Grace of Kings since I finished This Woven Kingdom, and I did not know that it would be read by Michael Kramer. So I'm feeling quite personally attacked right now by my audiobooks. If you don't know, Kate Redding and Michael Kramer are like the main Sanderson narrators. And it's not really because they read Sanderson that I don't care for them. Like, honestly, um, I just, I like Kate Redding better than Michael Kramer. I really don't like Michael Kramer. Like, <laughs> when I was saying that someone said they didn't like the audio for Grace of Kings, I was like, oh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, if I had known it was Michael Kramer, <sighs> I don't know. I might still do a bit of audio just to like, be able to make progress in the book when I can't physically sit down and read. You know, like while I'm cooking and stuff. But I might try to physically read it as much as I can. Because I really don't like Michael Kramer. Anyway, my lunch break is over. And um, I must get back to work. It is the end of the day. And I'm very tired. It is almost 7.30. But I did, as I said, finish This Woven Kingdom, discovered Michael Kramer was the narrator I have to look forward to for, what is it called? Grace of Kings. Um, but yeah, no, I need to read tonight something. And so that brain is fried. But I must read. I must read. I have to, I have to, I have to. Um, so, let's see. So I read Jade War which is conveniently right next to me. Do I start Grace of Kings over again to erase the Michael Kramer from my brain? Do I start Daughter of Red Winter? Do I start The Twelve Kings in Shirakai, which Elle tells me Jesse is hating? So, I mean, I gotta say, that does diminish my enthusiasm for the idea of starting that tonight. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Figure it out. I have to read something, though. No watching TV, Lana. You gotta read. You gotta read. I probably Jade more because I've already started it. So why start something else when I already have a book that I am far way through? Great. That makes sense. Kind of. I mean, the other ones are obligation books and this isn't. But I've started this one, so. Okay. <laughs> Good morning and happy Wednesday. <laughs> I did manage to read a little bit of Jade War uh, last night and this morning. I ended up getting really sleepy last night, pretty early, and then I woke up like an hour later and then couldn't get back to sleep for like three hours. So I did not actually get a ton of sleep last night even though I went to bed quite early. Yeah, so I'm a little over 40% through Jade War. 
Um, I should have time today to read. I have confirmed that Jesse is hating 12 Kings in Cherokee. So not, not encouraging. And um, I think my plan... So, I mean, not doing Grace of Kings on audio really does throw a wrench in my plans because, you know, that I finished this Woven Kingdom thinking, great, now I can move on to my next current audiobook of Grace of Kings, but I don't think I can do Grace of Kings on audio. Um, at least not the bulk of it. So I think as soon as I'm done with Jade War, I will read as much as I can of Grace of Kings physically and then do some on audio thereafter, like for while I cook and clean and do things like that. And I might, even though I, there's no way I will have already finished Grace of Kings, I will also start Twelve Kings to see how I go with that. And if like, if it's all so terrible for me, and if Jessie's going to DNF it, I don't, she hasn't said she yet, but if she's going to DNF it, then I feel that I have permission to DNF it as well if I hate it. I mean, ideally I like it, but anyway. And then Alan and I are going to chat about Daughter of Red Winter on his channel closer to the release date. So even though I would like to read it sooner rather than later, it's actually maybe a good thing to push back Daughter of Red Winter so that it's fresher in my brain when we chat about it, right? So it's the responsible thing to push it off, right? But yeah, like I always have an audiobook as my, my current audiobook, um, and I don't have one right now other than Grace of Kings. I should have The Hold coming in for another of my um, TBR books, Kai Kei. But other, oh, I guess I could start by Serve Cold. Maybe I'll do that. I'll start by Serve Cold on audio since Grace of Kings audio is a bust. All right, change of plans. So today I will start by Serve Cold on audio. Um, and then I may do some of Grace of Kings on audio once I've actually got a flow going by physically reading it. Um, and I mean, Jade War. Hillary already finished it and Vish already finished her reread of it. So, like... <laughs> Trying to keep up with my reading buddies has completely failed already, so I really have nothing to lose by pushing it off again. But I don't want to. I really only want to read Jane War. I don't want to read anything else. <laughs> anyway, I'll figure it out. And I'll keep you posted. But um, I do have a work call this morning that I need to prep for. So I must do that. Um, and I'll check in with you later. <laughs> So I've sort of solved my audiobook problem. Um, hi, by the way. It is nearing the end of the day. Um, I uh, have been quite productive, been a busy work day, and I also did laundry, which I hate doing so very, very much. <laughs> um, so I had a ton of laundry to do because I avoid doing it like the plague. Um, Any hoosies. Yeah, so while I was um, doing laundry, making lunch, etc., I did listen to an audiobook and it wasn't Grace of Kings. I realized that I had a bunch of credits on Libro FM. I was like, you know what? I'll use a credit. Um, I mainly get audiobooks from the library nowadays. Like, at all, if at all possible, like I, I only get audiobooks from the library, or as I used to constantly buy audiobooks myself. So I was like, you have all these credits. Just use one. So yeah, um, I, uh, oh, I haven't said, I don't think I said what I used the credit on. 12 Kings and Shirakai. Um, so I am, I feel like I've been listening to it for hours and hours and hours, but it is quite a long book and it's quite dense. So I'm only into chapter nine. Is that where I am? Yeah, I just started chapter nine. And so far, so fine. It started out really strong, by which I mean like the very first chapter. Like it opens with a bang. It's quite engrossing, you know, middle of the action kind of thing. And then ever since then, it's just been like non-stop info dumping and exposition, and it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of detail to try to keep track of, and it's also just like a lot of, in, like of it being delivered in an info dumpy way, which is the worst possible way to deliver that information. So, kind of annoyed about that. But it is a pretty cool world so far, and I am kind of sucked into the questions and mysteries of it all. But I mean, like, in addition to the info dumping, there's like kind of like stupid amounts of detail. Like, she's walking through this market and eating kumquats. And and then we're told that she's popping the grape-sized fruit into her mouth. And that she's enjoying the chewy, sweet skin and the tart inside. And there's like three or four 
references to the kumquats that she's eating. I'm like, I fucking get it. She's eating kumquats. Okay, can we move on from the kumquats? <laughs> so it's stuff like that. I'm like, okay, I know this is for like atmosphere, but like maybe you can mention kumquats like once for the atmosphere. <laughs> we, we get it. She's eating kumquats. Um, yeah, otherwise it's a pretty cool world that I'm more or less enjoying being in. Even if I'm a little annoyed at how the world building and story are being delivered quite ham fistedly. <laughs> but it's not terrible. It's I'm pretty I'm I'm interested. So that's where we are with that. Um when I wrap up work and laundry, I will try to make some more progress on Jade War. And also try to start maybe Grace of Kings before I finish Jade War. I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. I've listened to some more of 12 Kings and I do not like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I talked to Jesse a bit about it and we both agree that it's just doing, there's a difference between having like a descriptive writing style and just like listing descriptions of things. It's a subtle difference, but it's a big difference. Because I like plenty of authors books like that include sensory details. Patrick Rothfuss, Lainey Taylor, those are the ones that come to mind. Um, I mean, Donna Tartt. Um, I thought of one of them. Oh, Daphne du Maurier. But just literally sitting there and describing how everything looks, it's not the same thing. Telling us three different ways about kumquats. It's not the, it's, that's not it. And one of my biggest pet peeves is like to convey that a character has had a relationship with another character that his like, you know, like that person just died or like, they miss them or something like that, you know, but just like to catch us up on the fact that they have, you know, a lifelong or, or long time relationship with them. They'll, there'll be some like 
list of things that they remember, list of things that they loved about this person or something like that. And it'd always be like, they'll always miss how they used to go walking in the park together and the delicious cookies that they used to always make and the way that their nose scrunched when they laughed. It's just like, just being oddly specific does not make this feel authentic. When you're thinking about a friend that you miss or a loved one that you have known your whole life, like that's not what that sounds like. That's not, that's not it. And like, because my entire brain is occupied by the Depp Heard trial, um, in case this wasn't clear, I am pro Johnny Depp. I don't understand how anyone could be pro Heard at this point, but whatever. Um, part of, you know, the analysis and stuff that I've been watching is, you know, about why because I'm talking right now and that was not the time for that. <laughs> Why Amber Heard's testimony doesn't ring true. And you know, it's because she's doing that. Because she's like a bad author that includes like odd cats. Can we not right now? Including odd bits of detail to like try to make it feel authentic. Like, you know, noticing the color of the rug as you're lying on the rug after having been beaten. And you're like, yeah, no, no one actually does that though. Like that's not, that's not a thing. Um, and that's like what well, books that get it wrong. That's how they are where like it's these weird details that don't add anything and aren't how people are and aren't something that someone would say or notice or feel and it's just and it's like a lot and you can just feel the author's hands all over it because you can just like see the author being like oh and I'll include this detail. And you're like no. That's not how, that's not, that's not a thing. That's not how people are. Um, and also, I just posted on my Instagram about this, um, I would like, you know how people make fun of recurring phrases in books, like, let out a breath they didn't know they were holding, etc., that kind of thing? Well, my, my contribution or my re suggestion to be added to that list is when a character hears screaming, and then they realize that it's them that's screaming. I've seen that so many times. To the point where, anytime a character hears screaming, I'm like, I bet it's them screaming. And then they realized it was them screaming and I'm like, there it is. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I am not, I am not into it. I don't think the writing's very good. Which is unfortunate because I do actually think that there's like the core, at the core, as is my complaint with a lot of books a lot of the time, is that there is like the seed of a good idea. There's a, in, somewhere in there a good premise. Um, but it's just not well written. And with writing, it's all in the execution, which is why absolutely terrible story ideas can result in an amazing book if it's handled by the right author, and wonderful story ideas can result in terrible books if it's handled by the wrong author. Twelve Kings, so far, is just like, not doing anything egregiously bad, but it's doing every amateurish thing that I can think of. Info dumping, telling instead of showing, overloading detail, including extraneous and nonsensical and unrealistic details, both in the narration and what the characters are saying and noticing and thinking and feeling. Characters that don't feel like characters because of how they're acting, they feel like plot devices. Yeah, it's just not it. So I'll probably finish it since I bought the freaking audiobook, but not a fan, not a fan. You can't get it, baby, it's outside. Good morning. I realized that I was so upset about, I can't. I realized last night that I was so upset about 12 Kings that I didn't even talk about my first impressions of Grace of Kings. Oh, lots of kings. Cassie Cass, stop it. So I'm not super far in. Um, I am like three chapters in? Two chapters? Three chapters? And I messaged a couple of people to be like, so the ba beginning, at least anyway, is basically Fire and Blood, you know, the, by George R. R. Martin, because it's the conquering of seven kingdoms uh, in Fire and Blood. <laughs> no dragons, as yet. But, um, which is kind of funny since I just read Fire and Blood. So all this talk about there being seven kingdoms and that, like, they were all separate until this dude showed up and was like, I'm gonna rule all y'all. Um, I was like, this, this seems familiar. I feel like I just read this. But I am not. I am not saying that Grace of Kings is a ripoff of A Song of Ice and Fire or of Game of Thrones or of Fire and Blood. You can have seven kingdoms in your story. It's not like George R. R. Martin owns the concept of multiple kingdoms 
numbering seven. Anyway, um, so far so good. Very early days, very early to tell, but Ken Liu's, Ken Liu's storytelling is very good, uh, which I came to know in Paper Menagerie. Um, so at the very least, I am certain that I will come away from this book feeling that the writing craft is excellent. We'll see if the story works for me. It's, again, it's very, very early to say um, how I feel about that. Uh, we're just, we're still really setting the scene, getting to know what's what. Um, it feels heavy, it feels dark, um, but I kind of knew that going in, that that's the kind of thing this would be. Anyway, I have quite a busy day today. Um, I need to do some errands for work as well as for personal. I showered, so that's done for the day. So I need to like hurry up and make some breakfast so that I can head out um, and take care of some things. Um, and yeah, that's the situation. And um, while I'm out and about, I will be listening to 12 Kings and hating it. So love that for me. Um, but in the meantime, not in the meantime. I don't know what I'm saying. I know, I'll check in with you later when I've made progress on this, that, or the other. And uh, Kaz will check in when she's doing something feisty. Isn't that right, Kazzy Kaz? You look confused. Ow! Very rude. It has been an eventful day. Um, I, ha I made a little bit of progress on 12 Kings while I was running errands. But, um, okay, so I did run errands, you know, for work and for personal. Well, actually, just for work. Uh, no, personal too. Okay, well, whatever. I haven't done everything that I wanted to today. Um, but, okay, so I, let's start with, I got pulled over by a cop for the very first time in my life. It has never happened to me. My entire history of being a human, being a driver, it's never happened. And it happened because I didn't fully stop at a stop sign. I like basically stopped, but I didn't actually stop. And like my like the little ticket thing that they write out, like their their guess at my like miles per hour is 10 miles per hour when this occurred. And I mean like yes, technically yes, I did not stop at the stop sign. <sighs> so, that's going on my driving record. Love that for me. <laughs> anyway, um yeah, so that happened. And then when I was making lunch today, um, I spilled chili sesame oil all over my jacket. Um, and it was like a pale pink colored jacket that like, it was like too hot to still be wearing it, but I couldn't be arsed to take it off. And then it got covered in chili oil. So I washed it in the tub and it is now drip drying in my bathroom. Lastly, I realized that um, I thought that I had another week before we're recording the podcast for Best of Cold. We were recording it on Monday, so I need to read Best of Cold. I mean, I've read it before, so like, you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if I didn't quite finish it. But like, I, I want to have it fresh in my brain. Plus it's Abercrombie, so like, if it's between listening to 12 Kings and Cherokee or listening to Best of Cold, I mean, you don't have to tell me twice. Slight change of plans <laughs> for the rest of what's, so today is Thursday and then tomorrow. And then my brother's here all weekend, so like I won't have any time to read. So I will put a put pause on Twelve Kings because it's not from the library, so like there's no urgency other than I want to be done with it. But I'm gonna switch gears and start Best of Cold today. And yes, but my physical books remain Jade War and Grace of Kings. And you know what? I'm just gonna yeah, I'm just gonna focus on Jade. No, I should focus on Grace of Kings, right? So I do have the audiobook from the library, so like I want to take advantage of that while I have it. I'm definitely not buying that audiobook because Michael Kramer. Um, oh, and other eventful thing. <laughs> this is after the other things. This will be little, but like I uh, watched Kaz this morning come out of the bathroom and just drag her butt all over the floor, spread her feces everywhere. Luckily, she was doing it on like the hard floor, not on the carpet. <laughs> I look over and she's just scooting her butt across the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? So I had to clean that up. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's been my day. There she is. The lovely one herself. Say hi, Kaz. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that's the situation. Just thought I'd give you a quick update. Um, I need to do some work. Um, wash some dishes. Do some more work. Start Best of Cold. And, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. So I'll check in with you later. I mean, I don't... Do I need to give you a reading update for Buster Holt? I guess if I like might change my mind massively this time around, but probably just me be updating you on like, ah, it's so nice to be reading an Abercrombie book again after reading such crap. Are you excited for Buster of Cold Baby Kitty? Should have named you Monza.
Are you the snake of talons? Are you Monza Mercado? Are you plotting revenge? <laughs> oh! You're so rude, child. Just look at my arm. Just, uh, just look at this. This is mainly from last week. A little from this week. And then the other side. I've got some fresh ones from today. All my battle scars from fighting you, my demon child. You're so cute. You're so cute. Okay, bye-bye. Are you messing with the Keurig again? Cassie Cat. What have you done? Did you mess it up again? Did you mess it up? You did, didn't you? Why? Why do you hate the Keurig? Is this where this goes? I don't think so. Why? It's not twice for kitty. Stop. Put this back, okay? Why? Why must you do this? You proud of yourself? Think that's where that goes? Why well, it's not? You put it back? You put it back? Hmm? What are you doing? Let go. Give me that. It's not toys for kids. Gonna, no, no, no. You're gonna put this back, okay? I'm gonna put this in here. Where it goes. Okay? Okay, so quick update. <laughs> I have started Best Serve Cold. Um, and it's, it's so good. After sitting at 12 kings however then i realized that i could finish 12 kings tonight um and be done with it and i would still have time to do best serve cold tomorrow and then like monday morning afternoon like i, I would i would have time to finish it because i also then i could film a rant review tomorrow for 12 kings so that's the new plan even though i started best serve cold now um i'm actually gonna go back to finishing 12 kings but i also need to get groceries and I can't decide if it's better to do that now. Probably tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I have food in the house. I'll just go tomorrow as early as I humanly possibly can. Kaz agrees that this is a good plan, which means it must be a good plan. Is that right, Kazzy Kid? Are you gonna fight me? <laughs> you? Just quickly checking in before bed. Um, it is uh, half an hour to midnight. Um, and I did finish 12 Kings in Shirakai. I gave it two stars. <laughs> did not get any better. Uh, we did not expect it to. And needless to say, I will not be continuing with that series. And I think Jesse did DNF it, so it just remains to be seen what Elle's gonna think of it. And then I did get about a quarter 
Um, no, like a third, more than more than a third. I'm more than a third of the way through a surf cult. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty good tonight. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna work. Um, I want to film some videos. Well, I have to film some videos because I don't have anything filmed for Saturday. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, tomorrow I will try to finish Best of Cold, I think, and make progress on Grace of Kings. Those are my goals tomorrow. We'll see how we do with those. For now, it's bedtime. Is it bedtime, baby king? You sleepy? Good morning! I did in fact wake up like this. <laughs> this morning I'm gonna try to film some videos before I have to start work and edit at least one of those videos so that I can give it to my patients for early access for like a few hours and then have it ready to post tomorrow for my guaranteed Saturday video. <laughs> um, I have a few in mind. There's like several videos that I would keep wanting. They're like on my list to film. Um, and then every time that it's like a filming day, I'm like, okay, but like not today though. I don't have time today. And I don't know when I imagine I will have time. One of these days. Today is not that day though. Today, I don't have time. <laughs> so, I have a few videos in mind that I am going to film. I have a few, blah, 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 a few videos in mind that I'm not going to film. Because I don't have time. Anyway, um, yes. Don't have time to chat because I need to put my face on, make some coffee, and film. Not, I mean, I am filming right now, but you know what I mean. Okay, so check in with you later. Popping in to say that it has come to my attention that today is Friday the 13th and that is extremely exciting to me. I mean it makes me want to just like abandon all my plans to like film videos, do work, do errands. I just want to like put on Haunted Mansion merch and like watch some spooky movies and just you know make a day of it but obviously I can't do that but um, I don't know if anyone else gets excited about Friday the 13th. I get extremely excited ever since I was a kid. Um, it's like a little mini Halloween in the middle of your year. Um, I mean, in my perfect world, Halloween would be 24-7, 365, but since I can't have that, the next best is having some Friday the 13th sprinkled throughout my year. So today is Friday the 13th, and that brings me a lot of joy. So um, I hope you're excited too. Um, or, I mean, I guess I guess it's not Friday the 13th, but like by the time this vlog is going up, it will no longer be Friday the 13th. But I hope you were excited um, and we like unconsciously could bond over it today um, because we were both uh, contemporaneously excited about it. <laughs> or you probably don't care because you're an adult. Um, but this makes me happy. So anyway, um, despite what I would like to do, I need to get going on filming videos. Hence the full face of makeup. So I'll check in later um, about reading and such. <laughs> Well, it is over 90 degrees today, so love that for me. Um, I am approaching the end of my work day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end a little bit early today. 
Shh, don't tell anyone. But I got finally my copy of This Woven Kingdom because I went to my mailbox. Um, I'm When I say that, I mean, I, I don't mean like I literally went downstairs because I have ma a mailbox here too, but I have um, like a, you know, a post box. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, and that's where where this was sent. So I had to go there. Anyway, it's stunning. Um, this is not the right, this is the Ilya McCreed edition. Um, and I ordered it before actually reading it. Um, Cause I had been wanting it. Um, and I found, it was expensive, but like a, the best price that I had seen for it. Cause I was thinking about getting it. And then I was like, I'm not gonna spend a hundred dollars on a book if I haven't read it yet. So I got it on audio. I was like, I'm gonna read it, see if I like it, decide if I want it. And then, Kaz, what are you doing? Is there a bug bug? Okay, well Kaz is enjoying her day. <sighs> anyway, um, so yeah, I was gonna read it before deciding if I wanted to spend $100 on that book. And then I found it for less than that. And I was like, well, I doubt this will be here for long. And since it's going mainly for $100, I was like, if I hate it, I'll resell it for $100 <laughs> and make $40. Um, but it is, luckily I did like the book. And this edition is stunning. I'm on record as hating purple, but this is a dark enough purple. And it, it's like it knew that it was like hurting me a little bit by being purple. The inside is orange. <laughs> so it's, it is really gorgeous. That's that. Um, I made some, some small amount of progress on Best Served Cold um, while I was driving around. And a little bit while I was just in the kitchen around here. Um, other great news today. I went to Trader Joe's and they haven't had for, I think like a year, at least like many months, but I think it's been a year since they had veggie chili. And I used to buy their veggie chili on the regular. That was one of my favorite easy things to do. I mean, I don't really need to do that anymore because I don't go to an office. One of my favorite lunches to make ahead of time would be Daya mac and cheese, like their, their cheddar style vegan mac and cheese mixed with peas and like frozen peas and the Trader Joe's veggie chili and add like a bucket of hot sauce. And I would just like make that and then split it into like three Tupperwares and bring that for lunch every day. Well, not every day, but many, many days. Cause it's like really satisfying and a great combo. Cause by itself, the chili is not that good. And by itself, the macaroni is not that good. But mixing it together with hot sauce and peas, mm, so good. I like literally brought that to potlucks. Um, so I bought like a bunch of chili. <laughs> they didn't have things that I regularly buy that have not been out of stock. Like they didn't cast. In less happy news, Trader Joe's avocado prices went up. Um, for like two years, I've been buying their teeny, teeny tiny avocado bags where it's like six avocados for like $4.99. Um, I mean, they're the little ones. And now six tiny avocados, now six tiny avocados costs like six, 650 or seven or something. I was like, oh, inflation is hitting Trader Joe's. It's still cheaper than buying it from Whole Foods, but not, not great. Um, but they had some really gorgeous strawberries and gorgeous raspberries that were a, a decent price. Um, so I got those and some vegan yogurt and some almonds so I can have like, cause I mean, it's like over 90 degrees. So that sounded good cause it's fucking hot. So like fresh fruit and yogurt sounds good, but yeah. Oh, and they have a new flavor of sparkling water. And if you don't know this about me, I drink um, like unreasonable amounts of seltzer. I would drink more seltzer if it was not like prohibitively expensive to drink more than I drink. So yeah, excited to try it. It's, what is it? it's raspberry lime flavor. So I was skeptical about their watermelon lemonade flavor and it was really good. So we'll see how this is. Anyway, that's my reading slash Trader Joe's update for you. Um, I t I need to oh ignore ignore that mess. We'll just turn you this way. <laughs> um, I do need to clean the kitchen a bit, and I do need to listen to more of Esther Cold. So I will do both at the same time. And I still need to put um 
some laundry away from two days ago because I was washing sheets, so I had them like draped because they weren't fully dry, so I draped them over some doors. Um, and now I need to take them down and fold them. Anyway, uh, yeah, good thing I have an audiobook. And then I think maybe I could finish Esther Gold tonight. That might be a stretch goal. I don't know. We'll see. I'll check in with you. non-reading, non-food, non-vlog update. <laughs> My friend Lee, who I um, have not mentioned enough, but who makes all the amazing mugs that are on my shelves, um, such as my first law mug, but I guess since I've mentioned it now, I will show you in a second. Um, I asked her to send me um, something like not fun, like something that like I couldn't find here, um, and to send me that thing that I needed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like a practical household thing. Um, so, she was like, sure, and then she sent me that thing. But she didn't just send me that thing. She also sent me this Peter Pan mug. Let me show you properly. It's got the whole crew on one side and little Michael trailing behind. And then it says second star to the right and straight on till morning on the other side. And the inside is green. And look at this like curly handle. This is amazing. I'm always complaining. Hang on. I'm always complaining that like there's never any Peter Pan mugs. So I'm though no doubt that's why she saw this and got it because she's listened to me complain about them enough because there's Tinkerbell mugs galore but no Peter Pan mugs. And I'm like it's his freaking movie. Even the okay <laughs> no one cares but the Stitch Crashes Disney line I love Stitch obviously. And I love Peter Pan and like one of the lineup promised to be Peter Pan and I was like why like perfect you know crossover you know amazingness and like some of the designs they were coming out with were super cute and a lot of them had like little hats and little accessories like Aladdin uh he looks kind of he has like a booze little hat and Pinocchio he's got like a Pinocchio hat and P Pocahontas he's got the John Smith hat um, so I was like, obviously he's gonna have like a little Peter Pan hat, maybe a little dagger, it's gonna be so cute. No. Stitch crashes Disney, they made him look like Tinkerbell. Because it's always fucking Tinkerbell. And I'm, you know, it's not, it's not called Tinkerbell, it's called Peter Pan. She's actually not in it that much. I have a Peter Pan mug, is the joyful part of this store. <laughs> I couldn't resist complaining about the Stitch thing though, because that is unforgivable. Um, anyway, uh, let me show you that first law mug that I'm not sure I've ever shown. I keep meaning to like film a first law collection video and I'm always like, I'll show that mug then. But I guess that's a while coming. So here we go. This is the mug and it says on it, as you can see if the shot, oh, there we go, back to the mud. And it kind of looks like it's covered in blood. And I'm not picking it up because I have precariously balanced as a dagger on it and I if I move it um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get the dagger in that place again anyway that's one of like legitimately 50 mugs that's not an exaggeration that she has made that I have she's made more than 50 for sure but that I personally have that she's made um, are there some oh this uh, this name of the wind mug this is uh, another of her amazing creations. This Red Rising mug is another one of her creations. Uh, this other Red Rising mug is another of her creations. She likes to do little like 
surprises. Well, this one doesn't have a surprise, but it has like the little little wolf on it. Super cute, super cute. Um, do I have any others on my shelves right now? I have a lot of them uh, like put away, safely wrapped in bubble wrap. Cause I don't want to, yeah, I have some over here. Perfection has no place in love. This is from the movie Crimson Peak by Guillermo del Toro. It's not a book, but most of our mugs are bookish. It has an amazing bloody bottom and it's double-sided. A Vikings inspired mug. Um, it's It looks like it's runes, but it actually, if you like look, you can see it's actually like legible. It says the space between life and death. That's where we are the most alive. And this iconic blood splattered blood of my enemies mug in a giant, this is my hand. So this is like a giant, giant mug and it's blood splattered all over. Then the also iconic toss a coin to your witcher O oh, Valley of Plenty mug <laughs> that says fuck off bard on the other side. And the bottom has a, uh, a coin on it. And last but not least is this vicious inspired mug. Plenty of humans were monstrous and plenty of monsters knew how to play at being human. That is but a fraction of my Creatively Crafts collection. I have her shop linked down below all the time, um, but I think Hopefully I'll have updated this. Note to self, Leanna, update this if it's wrong. She had a website, but I think she's moved to just being on Etsy. Um, but regardless, you can find her on Instagram. And I'll have that also, if it's not already in the description. But it's creative, Lee, L-E-I-G-H, like Lee Bardugo, crafts. And you can use my discount code. Aren't I a fancy influencer? Um, yeah, so that's literally, literally the barest fraction of my collection from her. You can see why like I, I can't have them on my shelves because you literally would not be able to see the books because I have so many. Also, because like we both like a lot of the same fandoms, then the shelves would be really unevenly distributed because I have like probably 10, maybe more Red Rising mugs. So like it would just be like a clusterfuck of Red Rising mugs with other bare shelves or like uh, I have several Six of Crows mugs. I think I have a couple of Schwab mugs. Yeah. I have, yeah, there's a, did I say, I mean, there's a lot of, like, Grisha mugs, too, like, uh, so I have a couple Six of Crows ones, then I I definitely have, like, a Nikolai Lansov mug, and, um, yeah. Anyway, point being, her mugs are great, and now that I have her reading First Law, she's got First Law mugs coming. I She had me covered on Red Rising, but now she also, I told her, because she's like, you know what, First Law might just be, like, up there with Red Rising for me. And she like makes tons of Red Rising mugs because it's her fave. And I was like, I cannot wait for your shop to be literally 50-50 Red Rising and First Law. <laughs> uh, and I've sent her Jade City. So hopefully, hopefully we will soon have some Green Bone Saga mugs because I don't have any, well, that's not true. When I ordered secondhand the special, special editions of the Green Bone Saga, um, I also got with them the the character bookmarks and some enamel pins and some like trinket dishes that I literally don't know what to do with. Like really pretty, but like what the fuck do I do with a trinket dish? Um, they're really nice though. So like yay, but it's just, it's a breakable thing that I don't know what to do with. So it's more, mainly a source of stress. Any hoosies. Yeah. That's just my quick update. Okay. Back to reading and, and such. <laughs> Well, it is just past midnight, so technically it is no longer Friday the 13th, and it is the weekend, and it is the end of this little readathon vlog. All in all, it was not as productive as I had 
in my perfect world hoped and imagined, but it was decently productive. So these are all the books that I read at least some part of during this vlog. I started Grace of Kings. I made respectable progress in Jade War. And then I finished uh, This Woven Kingdom, 12 Kings in Sherakai. And just now, as of like two minutes ago, I finished Bester of Gold. So I have the rest of the month to read Kaikei, Daughter of Red Winter, Soul of the Fire, uh, Legends and Lattes to finish Grace of Kings and Jade War, which um <laughs> will be tough since I will be entirely glued to the trial. Uh, but I will obviously do my best. Um, but thanks for joining me for this little week of reading and living and and not not reading as much as I would have liked, but it is what it is. So I guess that'll do it. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings and whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you.